Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you the easiest way I know to cook a spaghetti squash. Today I'm going to be cooking one spaghetti squash and this is not a large one. It's on the medium to smaller side. All of them should have a little bit of a stem on the end of it like you see here. Now traditionally we will cut them from end to end uh, and, you, and then it makes the seeds easy to scoop out and the flesh easy to, to form into strands and scoop out. The hard part about it is cutting through that stem. Now some people will cut it across this way which uh, avoids cutting the stem but I like to use the halves as like a serving boat. So what I do and you don't have to do this, but I do it to make my life just a little bit easier. I will cut just a little bit of that stem end off for the sake of removing that stem and making it a little easier to cut from end to end. Now you can see this is not an easy process. I'm not a real big person, so if I was bigger it might be a little easier. Anyway, so I just cut a really small piece off the end just to make it a little bit easier to cut. I'm going to start by just kind of running the knife in there and then going from there to finish cutting it all the way through. This is the hardest part, just cutting the thing in half. In the meantime, my oven is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you see we have seeds on the inside. You have choices. You can leave the seeds in there while you're roasting it and then you want to remove them and if you do it that way that's fine. Uh, it's a lot easier to remove the seeds after it's been roasted than before. So you have your choices. I'm just scraping it with a spoon. I'm going to go ahead and get them out now. I have a little garbage plate sitting here. And there it is, basically just removed like that. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm going to roast it at 400 degrees. A lot of people will coat their squash with oil. I am not going to do that. I find that with the winter squash, it really is not necessary to coat them in oil. You can do that if you want to, and I have done that in the past. But I find that it's not mandatory and I prefer not to do that. So instead, all I'm going to do is take a baking sheet, which I have here. I've got a piece of parchment paper on there and I'm just going to turn this on the parchment paper, cut side down, and that's it. Now other people will say to add water to the pan. I don't even feel like that's necessary because the squash will release a little bit of its juices along the way. It's going to moisten this. It's not going to stick to the paper. And uh, that's all there is to it. You can season it at this point if you want. Some people will suggest you sprinkle the inside with salt and pepper. I don't even do that because when I go to prepare it, then I will season it. So you can do it either way you want. Hey, this is your squash, do it your way. There's my oven. I'm going to put this on the oven rack in the middle of the oven at 400 degrees and bake it until it is uh, to the point where I can poke a fork or a knife fairly easily through the rind here. And once that happens, then I'll take it out. It's done and I'll show you where we go from there. Uh, how long it's going to take, I'll let you know. Each squash you have is going to take a different amount of time depending upon how large or small it is and also how many pieces you have on the baking tray at the same time. All that is going to affect the length of time. So I'll let you know how long this one takes. My squash are completely baked. They were in the oven for right at 32 minutes and then I, I turned them over and put them on this platter so they could cool for Oh, they've been cooling for not quite 10 minutes, about 8 minutes, just long enough so I can just start to handle them. They're still very hot. But I took them off the tray because I wanted you to see that there's a little bit of juice that is released by the squash along the way. I did not add any extra water to this pan like a lot of people recommend if you're not using oil. 
it really is not necessary with winter squash at all. And just so you can see, out of curiosity, there's the bottom of it. They did kind of collapse a little bit for whatever reason. Um, but they are completely cooked. Now I'll show you what we do at this point is you just take your fork, a dinner fork, and just kind of run it in there, poke it in there, and you'll start to release the spaghetti squash strands that are in there and just kind of loosen them up and they can be easily removed from here and then you can use it in any recipe flavor it any way your little heart desires okay they are cooked you so you do not need to put oil on them you do not need to add extra water to them I just find that if I turn them cut side down on a piece of parchment paper, it works. If you don't want to use parchment paper, it will also work if you put them on a glass baking dish, cut side down, but then about 10 minutes or so into the baking process, kind of loosen them. Just do like this a little bit with them because they will start to stick at that point, but that's about when they're starting to release their juices. And so if you just loosen them a little bit that way, they'll be fine when you get to take them out. You won't find that they've been all stuck all over the place. There we go. We have some beautiful cooked spaghetti squash, SOS free. Now you can do what you want with it. Well, I do hope that this helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Take care. Bye-bye.